All right, I am super excited about this tutorial because it is so useful if you are doing motion graphics. So let's get into that. So it's gonna be built in geometry nodes and we're gonna use one empty to not only control the scale of objects based on the proximity, but also control the color and the material with that empty. This one object is gonna control quite a few components at the same time. And that concept is very beneficial for anyone doing motion graphics. I'm sure you can imagine a lot of cool things you can do with this. So with that being said, we're gonna get into that right after this quick shout out. Welcome to Real Time Materials, a collection of customizable procedural materials compatible with Eevee and Cycles. With over six years of experience, I have created an add-on currently containing 240 materials across 14 surface categories. This add-on will speed up your workflow, allowing you to stay creative while maximizing your artistic output. You might be thinking, what about image textures? Image textures are easy to set up, but don't give you any control. Real-time materials are loaded with custom properties, giving you the freedom to change roughness, color, and all kinds of patterns. You can change the shape of wood, the direction of cloth weave, and the size of scratches, among many other parameters. Even if you already know how to make procedural materials, imagine the time you will save if you could apply those materials in one easy click. All right, I am in 3.5.1. That's my uh, Blender version here. Let's go, ho let's go ahead, Shift A, and just drop in any kind of geometry. This is completely arbitrary because we're gonna hop into geometry nodes now. I'm gonna kill this window and click new and just go ahead and delete the group input. So first thing we're gonna do is get a cube. So Shift A, Search, C-U-B-E, throw that right here. And then we're gonna get our X size at 1.7 to kind of get it to right about there to where we wanna get it. Vertices, we're gonna go 12 on the X and then these two, I click and drag and go ahead and give it seven and that's gonna allow us to have a cube that looks like this. And that's the beauty of geometry nodes. You can really change it at any point. It's non-destructive, it's really good. All right, now let's go ahead and do the classic instance on points and that is gonna give us some control. So give it instance on points right here. Shift A, search ICO or sphere or any object really. This works on any kind of object you wanna throw onto this and throw that right here on the instance. I'm gonna give my subdivisions of four. Give my radius 0.22, just to kind of give us a good idea what's going on here. Now, this little scale guy right here, this is what we're gonna plug in our proximity system to. So first thing we're going to need is Shift A, go to an empty, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick the sphere, and then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, and then I'm just gonna um, hit G, move them over here. I'm gonna hit S and scale it down. And then hit Control A and apply that scale. That's really important because that's gonna affect the material and the gradient we put on this. So make sure you apply that scale. Now let's set up this whole system. So here in this empty, I'm gonna click and drag from the outliner and just throw it right here. First thing we need is a mesh line. Throw that mesh line and give it a count of one and plug location into start location. Very important, all these things definitely follow them to the letter for this to work properly. We now need a geometry proximity node. So geometry proximity, this is the magic man and definitely put it onto points because the points are what things are on so it's gonna affect that scale. If you do it on the faces, it's not gonna work. So plug mesh into target. And then now we can just plug distance into scale and we're gonna notice this happening. It's actually inverted, it's, it's doing the wrong thing. It's scaling them down rather than scaling them up. But this is now working. So what we need to do is get a color ramp and it's gonna do two things. So it's gonna allow us to manage the scale of our objects but also invert it because there's no invert node in geometry nodes. So click this, flip color ramp and now it's behaving the way we want it to behave. Now, this is a very non-precise way to go about it, but we're gonna be using black and white values to manage the scale of our objects. So if you take this one on the black color and bring it up and get your objects to whatever scale you want, kind of the ones that won't change, bring it to whatever scale you like, and then you can go to the white section and bring these down. And then what I'm gonna do is crunch this in, crunch this in, so it's a much more dramatic kind of gradient from the scale. And then you can kind of depict like this whole experience for yourself. So I'm actually gonna bring this over and then bring this something like here, crunch them up like that. And so now if I hit this guy and then hit G and move it around, this is gonna work out really nicely. And you can kind of bring it down like this and really see the power of it. 
And then I'm gonna bring it down like this and bring them over. And I think this is what, this is what we wanna go with, I like it. And then maybe bring this a little bit bigger. All right, cool. Now notice you can see the vertices here. So we can just go ahead and throw a set shade smooth. Set shade smooth right here. Now everything's gonna be shade smooth. Now let's go ahead and control um, our gradient here. So let's go ahead to the shading. So first what we're gonna do, set up a little bit of a uh, few things here in Geometry Notes. Let's click on the shading, click new. And I'm just gonna call this GRAD for gradient. And then we're gonna get a set material node and put the gradient node on that. Now it'll start to work so we can head over here to the shading tab. I'm gonna close these two tabs here. We're not going to need them. And let's start making this work. So what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna bring this up here and I'm gonna get a mix shader. And then I'm gonna hit Shift D and we're gonna get two of these guys. And this one, just throw a color on there so we can see how it's going to work. So now let's go ahead and enable this guy to control the color here. So we're gonna get a color ramp and we're gonna plug this right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get a gradient node. Gradient texture, plug that into, uh, actually turn it into spherical and plug that here. So now you can kind of see it apply to everything. So what we need to do is hit control T with that node wrangler add-on enabled, or just get a mapping node and a texture coordinate. And we're gonna go ahead and turn it into object. And the object we're gonna select is the empty. And now you can see it's starting to work. So what I'm gonna do is crunch this in and also crunch this in. And now when we move it around, that spherical gradient is gonna follow what we're doing. And that is what we want. So now we can go ahead and start to make this material actually look really cool. So I'm gonna bring the roughness down on this one. And then I'm just gonna bring this down here so we can just focus on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get a color ramp. And this part is completely up to your creativity. What colors you actually want to use in the color ramp. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring my roughness down so it's nice and shiny and weird. Definitely adds to the weirdness. But again, you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna get an ambient occlusion node. And this, I believe, only works in cycles. So I'm gonna hop on into cycles to get this to work. And so that's all you have to do is just turn on, go here to the cycles view, and then turn on your HDRIs here to preview some stuff. So now that we're here, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna plug color into the color ramp. And then you can bring this in, you can see the ambient occlusion working. So in this one, I'm gonna go with kind of a deep purple and a bit of an orange, something like this, and then bring it in like that so it's nice and powerful. Cool, this is weird and awesome and then the way I want it to look. Let's head back to geometry nodes just to add the kind of wires to really make this look, look like a, you know, a real structure. So we're gonna to need to get a join geometry node plug that there and just bring it down. And let's go ahead and get in a mesh to curve. Mesh to curve node, and then go ahead and plug, I'm gonna just bring it down, the original cube straight into mesh and plug that into the join geometry. And you're gonna see now that structure start to form. But if we go to the render view, it's not, it's not gonna, it's still not gonna be there because it's still a curve. So what we're gonna to need to do is get a curve to mesh curve to mesh, and then to add geometry, we need a circle curve. And then plug that right into profile curve, and then bring your radius to like 0 0.002. Now we have our box, our whole system. Now you're definitely gonna wanna know how to animate this. So, you know, there's many ways you can actually animate how your mouse behaves, and I don't, I have never actually looked up how to do that, and that might be fun to add some just kind of goofy weirdness to it. But the easiest thing to do is just to go ahead and get like a uh, circle curve, and then go to this empty, go over here to your constraints, right over here, follow path, and then select the path, and then go ahead and like kind of fix it. It's gonna be weird here. So then you can kind of bring it around the circle, and it's gonna be strange. Um, or you can even just get like a regular path, so curve, normal path. 
and then you can hit S to kind of scale it in. I'm gonna bring it over here. And then again, NURBS path, and then just bring it here to the edge. And you can do that. And what's great about this is you can click on these paths, click this one right here, and then hit E, E, and extrude it, right? And then hit E, 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 right over here. And just kind of create a whole path here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select both of these by hitting shift and hit F, and that's gonna fill it out. And then you can go ahead and animate it around. And what's awesome is again with this path, you can select random faces and then move it around. And that's gonna be pretty jarring right there. Um, so maybe I would leave it there. But you can go around and say select this one and then select this one, right click subdivide, so now you have a new one right here. Bring it down and so now when you click on the empty again, he's gonna go up and down like that. So that's how you can animate it. And then you would just keyframe it. So you'd go here, maybe 120 frames, hit your back arrow. I'm gonna go back to zero and then I'm gonna hit keyframe, go to the end, type in 100, keyframe. And then now it's traveling around your scene. So what I'm gonna do now, let's go ahead and actually uh, light this scene and make it look cool. So what I'm gonna do is hit Shift A, I'm gonna get a cube, I'm gonna hit the tilt, I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key, and then bring it down to the bottom here. And then I'm just gonna scale it, I'm gonna go to the top here, make it look really nice. Cool. Now I'm gonna go to the render view, and we're gonna get a light. This is just gonna be a very simple one point light setup. So scale it up and then give your scale like 500. Cool, that looks nice. This guy down here, I'm gonna add a new material. And right here is just like really up to your creativity. Now I'm gonna set up my camera. So I'm gonna kind of position my viewport to be right about here. Camera, Control, Alt, Zero. Snap it to view, then I'm gonna hit G to move it. And then what I like to do is go from perspective to orthographic, and then you can bring in your orthographic scale. And then for the floor, we're gonna get another plane. I'm gonna bring it down out of view and then just scale by hitting S. And then now we have this nice kind of simple gradient background for this whole scene. And this is gonna be super easy on your computer. So you can honestly render it like 120 frames. I mean, sorry, 120 samples. I'll click render. And there we have it, really clean. It was a three second render and because it's all smooth, all simple, all nice, it looks great, it looks good. And this is it, this is the animation. It's weird, it's cool, but there's a lot of ways that you can apply this to other animations. So that is really the whole point of the, uh, the tutorial. Let me show you how to render this out and we'll be on our way. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new folder. I'm gonna call this Weird goop, double select, accept, keep it as a PNG, and then render, render animation. And when you're done, you're gonna have something really cool like mine. So um, that's it. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you wanna check out real-time materials, that's really gonna help support my channel and support the Blender Development Fund. You can see that in the description. Uh, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.